physically I'm old, I can't do much, or, or I'm too young, or I'm too un inexperienced, or whatever. Just like I began my sermon, when I was a teacher, when I began to be a teacher, I was not a good teacher. I made a lot of mistakes. In fact, if I had been my principal at the school I was the first year teacher in, I would have fired me. But, but fortunately, I had a, a compassionate and an understanding principle that says, we're going to get through this and together, and you're going to do a good job. We're going, to, we're going to develop you into your full potential. And that's what God wants to do today for you, is develop you into your full potential. I'm not talking about be, being a person that is good at keeping rules or rituals or regulations. I'm talking about a person who wants to develop that relationship with your Heavenly Father that you can pray with confidence, you can, uh, you can serve God and, and know that it doesn't matter if anybody else recognizes it or cares about it, you've, you've done it for Him and that's enough. That's what it's all about. Uh, when I, again, when I first started preaching, I often when I left I felt so uh, discouraged because I felt like I couldn't express inside of me what I wanted to say and it wasn't coming out simple enough or clear enough for the people to, to understand it. I knew what I wanted to say but I just couldn't say it. But God knew that that I wanted to get it out and He began to work on me with with uh, as I would pray and, and He would help me to be a better speaker and a better communicator of his word. First John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. And that's what it is. It's in serving God. It's not about uh, you're less than somebody, you're better than somebody, or anything like that. It's all about a loving relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, when we think about work, we think about something that is unpleasant. Or something that, well, we have to do. You know, there was a, a, a song out recently, and I really like the words to it because it says, when I was a kid, uh, I used to to have to, to do cer certain things. But now that I'm older, I get to do those things. You know? And that's what it is in, as you develop and grow in the Lord. The things that you thought, oh, i got to get up and go to church this morning. As you grow in the Lord, you'll say, I get to go to church this morning and be with God's people and I get to worship. Especially those of you that have been uh, bedridden and you've been sick and you haven't been able to get out uh, and, and you finally get to come back to God's house and worship and be with His family. It's a great blessing. We've heard the, uh, the saying, anything worth having is worth working for. That's right. And it's the same way in God's kingdom. He speaks a lot about service and about ministering to each other and loving each other and helping each other. It's not just about memorizing verses or getting uh, you know, in a point in your life where uh, you feel spiritually competent to, to understand what God's saying, but it's more about, God, what can I do for you today? What are me and you going to do today? Who are you going to put in my pathway that I can be a blessing to today? We read about the parable of the five talents and the two talents and the one talent and how the, the, the uh, owner of this great estate gave five talents to one man to use until he got back and he wanted him to invest it and help it to grow and he did that with the one that had two and the one that had one. Two of them used their gifts appropriately and, and God was happy with them. But the third one buried their talent and they, they hid it because they were afraid that God would be disappointed in, in their performance. I want you to quit worrying about performance. I quit worrying about it a long time ago in the pulpit. When I do a good job, I do a bad job. I, when I walked out of the pul pulpit, I would say, God, I was obedient. I can't say I was good. I can't say I was bad. But, uh, I, but I would just say this, Lord. You told me to go up there and stand up there, and you would speak. So, Lord, I, I, I was obedient. 
So you quit worrying about your performance and be obedient to the Word of God. You know, I couldn't be that teacher just on days where, where I uh, was felt like I had, had it all together and I could teach. In fact, some days when I would go in, I'd be well prepared and I'd have really fun activities for the kids and, and have everything, you know, all lined up. Uh, it, sometimes those would be the worst days because the kids wouldn't cooperate. You know, we'd have a fire drill. We would, we would have, uh, you know, we would have all kind of chaos, a fight break out in the classroom, whatever. And uh, even though I was well prepared to teach that day, it didn't work out that way. And then there was other days where when I looked at my, my stuff that I had to do today, I said, boy, this is going to be boring. Uh, this is, I just, you know, how am I going to make uh, this interesting to these 12-year-old uh, kids? And I'd go in there and God would just give me a little idea and a little activity to do with them, and it would just be a great day, a fun day for everybody. But I'm telling you, that's the way in, in God's work. You, you just let God be the person that, that leads you and, and works through you and works in you. The Lord is saying to you and me today, work with me. Be my partner on earth. Brother Mark can't come to your house. He can't come to your job. He can't come to, 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 to help you uh, solve all your family problems. But if you'll work with me, I will make you the person that can be a, make a difference in the lives of the people that I put you in contact with. Your salvation is something you have to work out or the work will be left undone. God is telling each of you, I have something for you to do, and if you don't do it, it won't get done. Some of you invited people to come to church this morning. If you hadn't invited them, they would not be here today because they wouldn't know that they were welcome. Some of you brought people to church that would not have been able to come to church because they didn't have the, uh, the transportation to get here, but because of your kindness and your service to Christ, they were able to come and worship and have Christian fellowship together. So what are the two most important things you can do in your life as a Christian? Well, Jesus kind of summarized it up. He said, the first thing I want y'all to do is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Not a lot of work in that, loving some loving somebody like God. I mean, there's some sometimes it is work loving somebody, maybe one of your uh, relatives, maybe one of your neighbors. It's kind of hard sometimes loving them because they they don't respond to it very well. But to love God, it is a great thing, a wonderful thing. And then he said, look, while you're doing that, and as you're doing that, love your neighbor as yourself. Just get out there and do something for God and do it in Jesus' name and, and just be a blessing to other people. The list of those things that you can do depends on the generous gifts that God has given you. And each of you He has given different gifts to. You may not be able to do a lot of things that other people do, but you can write a note of encouragement. You can make a phone call. Uh, and, and uh, tell someone you're thinking about them and you're praying for them and, and you're sorry that they're not feeling good. Uh, there's people in the hospital. There's people in nursing homes. There's people everywhere that need you uh, to be the Jesus, be Jesus' hands and feet. I watched a, a news thing this morning where there's a TV uh, preaching thing this morning where uh, in World War II there's a statue of Jesus holding his hands out and, and a bomb dropped real close to it and it blew off the hands of Jesus. And the sculpture was still alive and, and after the war uh, he went to, 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 to uh, go down to where the statue was it belonged to this church and uh, he went to, the, to the, the leader of the church and he says, I will be glad to put the hands of Jesus back on Jesus, it, uh, just like they were before the, before the bomb blew them off. And the 
priest or pastor or whoever it was said no he said uh, I want people when they walk by to see that Jesus has no hands except your hands Amen. and when you uh, you think about Jesus you think about you are the body of Christ you are his hands you are his feet you are his mouth you are the love that he wants to work out and give to other people please join me in prayer Father, I thank you that you have given each of us eternal life and a heaven, a home in heaven. And this world is not our home. We're just passing through. And we thank you for that, Lord. But Lord, while we're here, we certainly have a purpose. And that purpose is deep inside some of us and it needs to come out. So Lord, I pray you would help us work it out so we might be able to be your hands and feet in this world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.